We continue our question of the relationship between the Christian who is sealed by the Holy Spirit, uh, the spirit of adoption, we by, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, right? And um, the sin nature. So let us look at Colossians chapter 3, starting in verse 1. If ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Excuse me. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you, you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication and cleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all in all, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And so the first thing that I want to point out is that the Bible, so Eastern Eastern religion, and they talk about uh, meditation, transcendent, transcendental meditation or something like that. Um, Oprah um, advances this cause, um, even as a so-called Christian. The idea is that you like, are just supposed to empty yourself, and you're just supposed to be utterly empty, not focusing in your mind on anything. Your thoughts and your focus and your attitudes are just to be utterly devoid and just empty, 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 right? And that's what you see the little, the little orange-robed monks in, in Tibet or wherever um, sitting on some mountaintop meditating. They're trying to empty themselves. They're not, they're not changing one thing for another. They're just, uh, just trying to utterly empty themselves. Well, that's not what the Bible teaches. Um, we see this over and over again. Um, set your affections on things above, not things on the earth, right? And so instead of focusing on one thing, don't focus on that one thing, which is things on the earth. Focus on the other thing, which is things above. And so we see um, the old man, as as he describes here, um, verse 8, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication, lying. Um, put off that, but it's not just that you put off that, you replace it with something else, have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Um, verse 12, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, forgiveness, charity. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and do everything in the name of of the Lord Jesus. And so it's not just simply um, putting off one thing and then that's it, but you're replacing one thing with another thing. Um, the next thing that I want to point out is the, um, the kind of already not yet that's, that's um, in this chapter. Ye are dead. So this is verse 3. Ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ. 
this would fall under the already. You're dead and life is saved with Christ. End of discussion. Done, 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 done. Right? But then, the now we go from already, and now we go to not yet, verse 4, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, present tense, or, or future tense, not present tense. Um, right? So, verse 3, your life is hid with Christ. It's ongoing, but it's also past tense. But then verse 4, future tense, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Have you appeared with Christ in glory? I think that the answer that you ought to be able to answer is no. And Paul berated the Corinthians. And I, I wish that you were reigning in the kingdom. Like that would be, Actually, that would be really great. Because if you were reigning in the kingdom, then we would be reigning with you. And there are some particularly more charismatic people who suppose that they're just just utterly, utterly reigning in the kingdom, that they are king's kids and they strut about and perhaps every knee shall bow and every tongue should confess them because they're royalty, right? And and they're stunners. They're they're amazing. Um, Of course, you know, royalty only makes sense in the context of one class is one way and another class is another way. Namely, that there are nobility and royals and then there are the vast majority of other people who aren't, right? But if everybody's royalty, how does that, how does that, um, how does that make any sense? How does that like exalt you above everybody else because it actually makes you the same as everybody else? If everybody's royalty, then it ceases to become something special, Okay, Um, then of course in verse 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. You know, if you're new, and again we come back to this um, already, you know. um, If you don't have uh, members which are on the earth, which include fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, so on and so forth, then how in the world is it that Paul's telling you to mortify something that you don't have, right? Which doesn't doesn't make any sense. He's telling you to mortify something that you do have and saying, put off all those things. Now that you have the Holy Spirit, you are increasingly and increasingly um, becoming strong in spirit and having the ability to be able to do those things. And put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Which is an ongoing action, right? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 4. Put on as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies. This is an ongoing activity. And so now we see, we've already looked at the already, and we've already looked at the not yet, but now we're looking at the ongoing activities. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Uh, I mean, you know, if if you just knew, 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 and that's just the end of the story, there's nothing else to say, you're a new creation, you know, stop believing a lie that you're not, then why would you have to do anything at all to let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are called? Why would you have to struggle to be thankful, right? And, you know, Surely you struggle to be thankful, and I surely struggle to be thankful. If you're just utterly new and you don't have a sin nature, then why in the world is it that you struggle to be thankful? Because there is a deceitful heart that is left in you, and you're setting your mind on the things of the flesh and not the things of the Spirit. right? And it's easy to do. We're surrounded by a culture whose mantra is, Me, more, now. I want to have what I want when I want it. I want to have more of that, and I want to have it now. And I just, I just saw an article on YouTube of, of millennials being the most insolvent generation where more of them, I guess, per capita are declaring bankruptcy, right? Because it is this generation that has been raised up in this mentality of the baby boomers who are historically the wealthiest generation that's ever existed on the face of the earth of some hundred billion people. 80 to 100 billion people who have ever lived on the earth, they are the richest, wealthiest generation that has ever existed, period. They're rich. Even the, the middle class ones who are living pay, paycheck to paycheck, they're rich. They have a house. They have a car. They have a refrigerator. They have a, a washing machine or the ability to do laundry. They are rich, and they are the most rich, powerful generation that has ever existed, 
and they see these millennials see how their parents live and they want it now and they don't want to have to work for it they don't want to have to wait they don't want to have to um, even make some sort of investment or save or something like that. They they just want what they want immediately, and they want more of it too. And of course, we all find ourselves in uh, falling into that mindset of mammon, of covetousness, of idolatry, of greed. Um, I just get frustrated with myself sometimes. Like the Lord gives me, say the Lord gives me a hundred dollars, which of course he doesn't have to do, doesn't have to give me anything. He gives me a hundred dollars and I find myself wanting 10 times as much. Like, oh, well, but I, you know, okay, well this only does this, but I want to do this, 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 and this. And it's just like, I, I find myself being unthankful and ungrateful and, and covetous of things that I don't even have, even though God just gave me something he didn't remotely have to give me. What a, what a frustrating and a difficult and a challenging battle to have to fight a war going on inside of your own heart. Um, you could be in a closet like I am, right? There's no bullets whizzing by. You know, there's no, you know, armed, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans are battling it out in the, in the Civil War or some such thing. I'm in my closet, right? And even relatively quiet, relatively peaceful, but even being in my closet, there is a war going on inside of my heart and I can't escape it. I have to deal with it. I deal with the ramifications of it all day, all day, every day. Um, and so the point of this video and also the series on enmity is to help us to understand that we are in an enmity, that 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 enmity has profound implications if it is that that enmity is going on inside of our own heart because we can't ever escape it, right? If you're in Kosovo or if you're in uh, Palestine or somewhere and there's, you know, two little warlords battling out for supremacy of a, of a block or something like that, um, you can run away from there, maybe. You can get out of there and you can go somewhere else where they're not fighting, but if there's enmity that's inside of your heart, you can't escape it. You can't just go to some Barbados or some, some uh, fancy island and some fancy beach and sit on a beach and, and sip a pina colada. The sensual man who doesn't have the Holy Spirit would say, well, the crap, that's peaceful. You sit on the beach, you drink a cool drink, you know, maybe some little people are dancing in their little skirts or whatever. I don't know. You know, the whole festive atmosphere. But it's like, that is that isn't actually really peace. And that isn't actually really life. Because it's the Holy Spirit is the one who's able to give life, not an external circumstance. But the way that we access that life is because we set our mind on the things of the Holy Spirit and not the things of of the flesh and the flat and the flesh and the Holy Spirit are at enmity with one another and warring against one another and it's happening all day every day inside of our own hearts which is why I continue to teach that it is so important to understand what the Bible teaches about the old man and the new man so that we can disagree and put off the old man and agree with and put on the new man and experience the peace and the joy and the long-suffering and the self-control and the life that God makes available through the power of the Holy Spirit.